bonjour and uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, so, and welcome to this uh, webinar series, which is uh, by Campus Run. And this is the second in the lot of the webinar series on PhD in France. So, um, I would introduce you to my uh, very brilliant uh, panelists in a while. Uh, before that, let me just introduce myself. I'm Ambika. I'm the scientific coordinator at the French Institute in India. I'm majorly handling the scientific uh, cooperation uh, between uh, industry and academia, between India and France. Okay, so uh, I would like to um, mention a few things uh, about why we are having this uh, discussion. I would just call it a, as a discussion where we are trying to uh, see uh, and project the questions which I think are important for people who uh, want to do a PhD and to in a broader picture of um, about PhD and the research that is going to follow after that. So my colleague Minakshi Singh from Delhi, who is a scientific coordinator at the Embassy of France in India, had actually done a, a webinar on a PhD in France previously, where she had highlighted about the uh, rich scientific culture of France. And she had also told about how to uh, formally enter into a PhD program in France. Uh, she also gave a lot of information about the scholarship, so I'm not going to reiterate the points. Uh, you can always go back to the video, which is there on uh, the Facebook page of uh, uh, Campus France India. So you can all watch it uh, uh, and be mostly philosophical in terms of PhD and your career choices. So these are the questions I think every one of you would have if you want to do a PhD uh, in France or PhD anywhere for that matter. So, and I would also like you to watch a very cool video, which is uh, a video which is put up in the Campus France Facebook page, which actually highlights the diversity of the uh, scientific culture in France, which has uh, uh, the research uh, or the ongoing research in aeronautics and agriculture and artificial intelligence. There are so many. So that will give you a good idea about the a scientific heritage of France. Okay, so today we will be discussing uh, several points, and I might highlight the points previously discussed in the previous webinars. Uh, we we'll just touch upon wherever it is required. Uh, but you can always uh, contact me uh, if, in case you need to ask any question, or you can also uh, put on put in your questions uh, in the comments box below, and I will try and answer. Um, as much as I can during this session, because we are not going to uh, have a very, very prolonged session. We will ha be having this session for a maximum of 35 40 minutes. But in case I have a book or if you can provide email, I would just answer back to you um, and uh, reply to all the questions. So welcome. Uh, the two main panelists who are both French alumni. Uh, one is Dr. Pahde. She is actually working with uh, the BBRC Sinjin pharmaceutical company in Bangalore. Pushpa, welcome. And um, I, I would also like to introduce to you Dr. Supriti Baweja, who is uh, working currently at the Liver uh, Institute in Delhi. Uh, I wouldn't want to say more and bore you. Uh, so I think it's better that the candidates uh, introduce themselves. So uh, Pushpa, why don't you uh, tell something about yourself, your background, and what you're doing currently. Uh, hi, everyone. Hey, Ambika. Uh, nice to see you. So before I start, uh, my, sinc uh, my sincere thanks to you and uh, uh, Embassy of France and CNRS in India and Campus France for and uh, Institute Francais in India for giving us, you know, this uh, great opportunity to interact. Yeah, that's the first thing. And um, yeah, currently I'm uh, working as a scientist in um, um, in the fibrosis discovery biology in Biocon Bristol Mayo Squibb Research and Development Center, which is a part of Sinjin International Limited in Bangalore. Uh, so previously I did my uh, PhD in immunobiology uh, with um, uh, in, in France, uh, for the past nine years I was in France, I did my PhD uh, under the guidance of Dr. Srinivas Kaveri and Dr. Jagdish Bairi from INSERM. 
And uh, later to that, I completed a four years of postdoctoral studies in, um, in immunopathology of uh, liver fibrosis with Dr. Sophie Lotestein from INSERM. Uh, so um, recently, I moved back to India and have joined this position. Okay. That's a lot of friends connection. Thank you for the very, very brief introduction right now. Um, bonjour and uh, very good evening. Uh, thank you, Ambika, for having us here. Uh, I'm Dr. Sukriti Baveja, working as an assistant professor in the uh, Department of uh, Molecular and Cellular Medicine at the uh, Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences, which is actually a mono super speciality hospital for liver diseases. And uh, it's a research institute under NCT Delhi. And I have almost a decade uh, experience of research in field of uh, liver immunology, molecular and cellular biology. And I did my uh, PhD from Delhi University, after which uh, I finished and uh, moved to United States of America for a postdoc at UIC Chicago, and then another postdoc at CRI in, uh, in some laboratory in France. So I'm, uh, we will okay. talk more about the details. Sure, sure. Thank you again. So we will be more talking about your postdoctoral experience and trying out your scientific expedition across uh, the different countries. Uh, I think it's now uh, that we will just uh, go ahead uh, with our panel discussion about about philosophy of PhD and your career choices. So, um, Pushpa. I would be asking you the question first, and then I would move on to security for the um, you know the next uh, the next questions. Or if if, if security has something to add on, you can always add on. There's no problem. So um, so you said that you did your um, uh, PhD in France, right? So what is that that motivated to do a PhD and that you in France? And when you talk about that, I would also like. Uh, to highlight the fact about how you adapted in a new country with a totally new language. Was that difficult for you knowing French was, uh, did you know French before you went there? What was it like? Can you just uh, give us a glimpse about it? Yeah, Ambika. Hello? Yes, we can hear you, Pushpa. Oh, yeah. Yes, tell me. yeah, so um, yeah, that makes a story. That's what I was telling. I'll try to make it a, make it a short story. So um, yeah, you asked me doing why PhD and why in France. So uh, of course, doing PhD was my I can continue. I think there was some glitch. I think uh, I still can't hear you properly. One second. Can you hear, Pushpa, what I'm saying? But I can't uh, hear you. I think probably there is some issue with your headphones. Hello? Do you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Hello, Ambika? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, I was getting notification saying host muted you. Okay, okay. No problem. So, so we will continue our discussion. Sorry yeah, for sure, the uh, sure. glitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Mm, yeah, so uh, I was saying about, uh, yeah, doing uh, PhD was my dream and uh, doing it in France was something uh, destiny offered me and I, uh, of course, I'm proud of it. And um, in fact, I always wanted to, you know, I wanted to do PhD and choose uh, uh, science for my uh, career and become a scientist. And um, actually, I come from a very small village, you know, a little village in the no inner north of Karnataka. And um, as, I, uh, uh, as a child and as, a, as I grew up, I always dreamt of science and, uh, you know, being a scientist. And uh, so after uh, completing my basic education uh, from the regional schools of Karnataka State Board, I didn't want to take any uh, medical or engineering uh, courses. So I rather wanted to study fundamental science and, uh, you know, I wanted to take a, a bachelor degree in, in, uh, in science and biology was my favorite subject. So I took a, a BSc option and then uh, I did my BSc in biological science and followed by master's in biochemistry. When I was in MSc, uh, when I was doing my master's, I actually started seriously thinking of uh, uh, research as my career plan. And in fact, with, uh, with all the support from my family and my mentors, uh, uh, it was going very well. And uh, uh, my interest toward science was uh, growing. And uh, I got the gold medal. I could finish uh, my master's with uh, good credentials and with the gold medal. So that was a kind of, you know, that made me to dream even bigger. So at that point, at that point of time, and uh, so after that, I started really looking for uh, research opportunities after masters, and I got an opportunity from the Institute of uh, Indian Institute of Science, uh, Department of Biochemistry, to work as a research trainee with Dr. Patrick De Silva. Uh, so I worked there for one year, and during that time, I was looking for real uh, PhD opportunities uh, that included, uh, you know, India and uh, abroad. So along uh, while I was working there and uh, during my search of PhD, I came to know about the laboratory of uh, an eminent immunologist in France. Uh, that was Dr. Srinivas Kaveri. Uh, although his lab was in France, he was having uh, lots of active collaborations in IISC. So that you know, gave me a kind of uh, a great opportunity to interact with such people. And uh, I was really uh, excited by the, the kind of uh, uh, a quality research in immunology that were being carried out in his laboratory. So later with his guidance and uh, along with the guidance of Dr. Jagdish Bairi, who is uh, another immunologist from the same lab, uh, I, could, uh, I could make the, the research proposal uh, and also could make the formal application to the University of Pierre and Marie Curie in Paris. And, uh, and I, I was also fortunate enough to get the research fellowship from, the, from his grants of INSERM and you know uh, that fellow getting the fellowship was an important factor for me because without a fellowship going to countries like france and doing phd would be a dream so um, yeah that's how i uh, i ended up uh, starting i mean i ended up uh, starting my phd in in france um, yeah so once i uh, of course i was excited to go to paris and all that factor was true so when i entered to Paris, I went with lots of you know mixed feelings. I mean, I I I was excited to go. At the same time, I was so a uh, little bit of scare and I mean, a fear mixed of nervousness and uh, uh, and yeah, of course, I was curious and excited about the new life and uh, and a bright scientific uh, career in front of me. That all the thing was you know motivating for me. So I went. Um, but the day I went and uh, I entered the lab of Dr. Kaveri, which is in the center of the city in Paris, you might be knowing. Uh, and uh, but the day I entered his lab, I almost, uh, it was my first day, I almost forgot that I have come all the way 5,000 miles across uh, to, to reach that place. You know, uh, I mean, the people and uh, that, that was such a friendly and uh, uh, scientific professional uh, environment. I mean, people were really, uh, really helpful and supportive. They were really kind, along with my, uh, my mentors, Dr. Srinivas Kaveri and Dr. Jagdish Bairi. Other people from the lab like uh, Seb, uh, Sandrine, uh, Jordan, Marie-Francoise, I'm, I'm happy to take their names even. And uh, we were lots of Indians also at that time in the lab. Uh, I mean, there were seniors to me, uh, Mohan, Vani, and uh, Shiva. 
who joined almost along with me a little bit earlier, and then uh, Ankit and uh, Meenu and uh, Nimesh. So all of us, you know, uh, we Indians, we made a little Indian family away from India and we started enjoying it. So apart from the fact, um, apart from the fact that I didn't know any French, um, it wasn't that difficult as I imagined to get used to that new life and uh, new society in France, I mean, in Paris. But um, because of the, you know, uh, as per the university rules, I even had to take some uh, basic French courses that really helped me initially to at least to get to know some words and to try to interact with the people and to at least initiate a dialogue in French. Or, so that was the, uh, an advantageous part for me. And later, uh, over the time, I could even learn, uh, I could even learn uh, at least an acceptable communicative French. And that really made my life easier, much easier. Yeah, that's what is my, I think, a quick, I try to make it a quick story how I ended. And it, was, uh, it was rather, but I was full of just uh, components. Actually, that's a very important from, from a cosmopolitan city. Coming from a place like you, you came and then, you know, drink and wanting to uh, I think I should play with you there. So uh, I know that uh, uh, Pushpa actually had a lot of hurdles to, uh, you know, find out all these information and then to apply. You know, get to her PhD lab and then do research. But uh, I think it was some time back. And right now, actually, you have the advantage of Campus France actually having a portal for uh, PhD in France. And I would like to just show you a glimpse of that right now. Where you can uh, see. Uh, the uh, you can, you can actually see that um, uh, there are different options which are available uh, for the uh, PhD in France. So this is the site. Uh, I don't know uh, whether you are seeing that. One second. Um, yeah. Yeah. So here is the PhD in France website, uh, where which is uh, hosted by Campus France Portal. So this is actually a place where I can get all the information. And this, uh, by giving different keywords in the field you want to do your research, you can actually see the different kinds of uh, the promotions and advertisements that the lab puts in. And you can even see the salary you would be getting for your PhD. So I think these kind of information are very useful. And you can uh, also go to another uh, platform, which is actually called the Association uh, Grenade uh, uh, Association Bernard Gregory, uh, where um, I will just show you that also right now. So here, actually, there's another similar portal where you can actually get a lot of information again on the PhD in France. So I think right now we have all these tools to explore. So you can definitely dream big, and there is uh, uh, not much of factors which is stopping you really. So uh, with that, I would like to ask Supriti. I know Supriti did her PhD in India and that I think in Delhi and how was it for you? I know PhD in France and uh, in India structurally are very different. In France you have a PhD in science and engineering um, for like three years, maybe four years to the maximum that you get an extension, but in uh, India very different story. So would you want to just say about that and also tell us what did you enjoy the most during your um, PhD in India? Uh, of course, um, uh, it was very thrilling, in fact, but uh, I will tell you that uh, during my master's, uh, which was in uh, biochemistry from uh, Kurukshetra University, I was uh, very much oriented and aspirational to do research and specifically for the cause and the research which should be translational and it should be from bench to bedside. And uh, it should be very helpful uh, even for the mankind. So I don't want, uh, I don't want, I never wanted that my research should be only, you know, for the publications. It should be very useful. So my orientation has always been like that. So during that time, I got to know about uh, Professor Shiv Kumar Sareen, who's my guru, my mentor. 
and uh, who's a very, very uh, well-renowned uh, hepatologist. And I found that he's actually the connecting link between uh, the biology and bringing it to the patient. And maybe we can do some kind of a research uh, which will be helpful uh, for certain diseases. So my story of uh, my acquaintance with uh, him is actually a very interesting one. So I reached out to him and uh, I just went and uh, said, uh, Sir, I want to make a vaccine for hepatitis C. And he instantly looked at me and laughed at me. And he's like, and then he got really impressed that, yeah, I have an enthusiasm. And uh, instantly he agreed to be my guru and my mentor. Uh, since hepatitis C vaccine, uh, I think uh, it's been uh, working from decades and, you know, it's a vast area, but we did extensively work on immunological aspects of hepatitis infection. So ever since that time, I got to know Professor Sareen and uh, he has been my guru and helped me grow significantly over the years. Uh, about the duration of PhD in India, it, we always have a notion that in India there's a lot of slog and you know you have to spend years or maybe I've heard uh, people spending seven to ten years but fortunately I was very lucky I completed my PhD in four years and with good number of publications and uh, that's because my immense regards to my supervisor uh, actually for his prompt support and uh, for guiding me how to be agile in the expansive field of hepatoimmunology. So I enjoyed the most during my PhD. Um, actually, it's always felt like an open ground to discover and learn from even uh, though there were uh, very limited resources. But because of limited resources, I felt we had uh, more opportunity for innovations. And my learning was actually very much at the basic level. And uh, hence I knew I always had that opportunity to grow better and which always kept me further motivated and intrigued. So in fact, uh, my PhD in India was uh, very thrilling. I uh, got the chance and opportunity to travel all over the globe, attending different conferences. And I'm very glad that uh, government, uh, the Ministry of Science and Technology, ICMR, CSIR, they give a lot of travel grants actually uh, for us. Even during PhD, I was uh, gone for a couple of months for different kind of training, such as I went to Germany uh, in Carlos Guzman's lab. Then I was in UK and David Eden's lab. And then I was in Italy for a short time in Carlo Ferrari's lab. So all world-renowned immunohepatologists, uh, I was able to reach to them. And uh, there are there were travel grants and I was very well supported. And my PhD work was also uh, done with uh, good publications and good substantial amount of work. So I'm very grateful to my mentor and, and also the funding agencies. Okay, great. Uh, I think that's a very nice experience of trotting the globe and having, uh, you know, having had a chance to collaborate internationally. So we will come to the collaboration bit in a bit. So, um, so moving to Pushpa again with the next uh, section of the question is, I know that after your PhD, you actually continue to stay in France for your postdoc. And, and yeah, I'm Pika. Hello. Did you hear my question? Yes. Yes. You I got question? your question. I, yes. Yes. So um, after my PhD, yes. Uh, I mean, coming back to India was always the plan. Um, but uh, I mean, um, towards the end of my PhD, I al almost, uh, you know, got so comfortably adjusted to the life in France uh, with my family. And um, actually, my husband was working as a postdoctoral fellow at that moment. So um, for family and personal reasons, it was more convenient to, uh, to live there for some more time. And then um, that time, I used that as an opportunity to initiate my postdoctoral studies. And so I joined for another postdoc 
so that's how we extended the life in France for another four years. Okay, that's family into place. And here we are three women. So actually we have something more to add, um, I think, to the, uh, the role women play in this and also how she balances family and work. So I will come to that personal uh, bit uh, that women have to play in research. Uh, in some that uh, uh, I know that in... in, in uh, middle of do postdoc and how did that happen how did you come all the way from the u.s to france okay uh can you repeat the question ambika is it for me because you're cracking up okay so why did you uh, how did you come to france okay, for your postdoc so why did i choose the uh, france the question. Uh, okay, so, uh, you know, since my childhood, uh, or even uh, when I was doing bachelor's in biochemistry and master's in biochemistry, I was uh, actually was very, very fascinated with France, because of one uh, of the reason that was, that is uh, the land of Marie Curie. Uh, and she's one of my uh, favorite scientists. She's the first woman who won the Nobel Prize, and not only once. She's the only scientist who won it twice. So we know that France is a land of intellect in terms of literature, art, culture, science, fashion. So in my mind, in a nutshell, I will say that they are kind of perfectionists. So uh, after I uh, uh, you know, finished my postdoc in, in US, I was back in India and uh, I joined as senior fellow in the uh, Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences. So, I was very fortunate that uh, our institute actually had an MOU, um, which is Memorandum of Understanding with the INSERM Institute in uh, Paris and France. And they already, uh, uh, you know, were working in collaboration between, because there were uh, some projects which were already running uh, during that time. And uh, uh, I got this opportunity to actually work on T lymphocytes and liver fibrosis in the laboratory of uh, Sophie Lodestein, mm -hmm. uh, same as Pushpa, uh, who is actually the director of uh, research at INSERM. So I, uh, when I got to know about this, I was absolutely thrilled because all I wanted to do was go to the land of Marie Curie and uh, go to the land of uh, all perfectionists. So France is, of course, a very uh, beautiful country and it's the uh, world's most research-intensive uh, nation and popular and immensely admired destination for international students and research researchers. So the moment I got the offer letter, I understood why it is so. Because starting from the documentation, you prepare the paperwork learning French using the Google Translator, calling Pushpa all the time. What is it? How I have to fill the form? And, you know, she's helping me continuously over the phone, over the video calls. And um, finally, uh, you know, when I reached, uh, we, we, we were testing all our limits during the experimentation and the pomp and show of Paris. So, but as soon as I landed, I could uh, feel the energy of the city, such colossal thrill intellect and I could see that there's a direction to fulfill my all aspirations. So actually, uh, Ambika, we, I, I, I will say thanks to Pushpa also. Uh, she's been um, my support all the time that I actually had a wonderful experience as a postdoc in terms of culture, science, and uh, of course the new methodology, innovations, hypothesis. It was just wonderful. I think, uh, Ambika, can you hear us? Uh, Ambika, can, you can you hear me, me now? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So uh, how would you compare your experience doing uh, a postdoc in France that to U.S.? Because you all postdoc in U.S. as well. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, U.S. is absolutely different. 
because uh, in France, you will not see French walking uh, around carrying a takeaway Starbucks. They will sit in a local cafe with an espresso instead. Mm -hmm. They'll take a good, nice lunch break. And it's perfectly normal to even walk to a restaurant and have mm -hmm. a glass of wine. Uh, whereas in the uh, US, it was absolutely different culture. Uh, and the, the culture of France, which I described, is not only in terms of uh, cafe, you could see even, uh, you know, when it comes to in terms of research, they are so meticulous, so precise in their methods of approach towards the research process. Whereas uh, in the US, when you are at work, you are at work, you are absolutely dedicated. If you're having more than 15 minutes of lunch break, people are, you know, raising their eyebrows and, you know, you have to, in, you, you have to work intensely in the uh, US. Whereas in France, you generate hypotheses, you think science day and night, have a glass of wine, can work anytime, anywhere, and 24 hours if you want. So there's, uh, I could sense uh, more work and personal life balance in France. And uh, I could uh, see more happy people, happy faces around. Yes, uh, we have the work and lifestyle to credit for that. And both places, of course, have their own fascinations. And uh, uh, in fact, I feel very lucky to have experienced, you know, both the continents of uh, working uh, at both places with such great resources and provisions. And uh, pro of course, France certainly has its own galore, which I will say. Um. I know that we have had a nice comparison. I think we'll have to hurry up a bit with our questions because we're running out of time, though we are making a lot of points for the people. So um, another question I have for Pushpa, um, taking it to a different level. Actually, we've talked about uh, the, you know, the pre and the postdoctoral opportunities. But while in France, did you actually encounter a lot of workshops or opportunities or platforms where people would talk about unconventional careers or was academia or industrial research uh, the sole uh, you know the sole career choices for people do, do, do you have a lot more exposure when doing your PhD and postdoc in France? Um, well yes yes um, so uh, actually there are lots of uh, opportunities and platforms that provide you know uh, lots of uh, career guidance and uh, career planning, uh, uh, the, the platforms that provide that. Of course, uh, Campus France is the best example. And it's uh, over the years, I see that the evolution and uh, how, uh, how significantly it has been changed in providing the materials and the required uh, platform to the students. I remember when I went, I mean, I have also registered to Campus France. It was started at that time, but it was uh, much to the lesser extent. However, there used to be lots of uh, uh, web pages and, uh, uh, and some of the workshops that I did not uh, strictly attend all those, but I was aware of those workshops that, uh, organized by Campus France. And there's, uh, there's one more uh, organization. It's a French government organization. Uh, it, uh, it's called uh, Pôle Emploi. Uh, or it's basically an employment poll, you know, where uh, where people can get more uh, more personalized uh, uh, more personalized uh, suggestions and uh, um, and opportunities depending on their field of interest. Where uh, it is, this is a dedicated platform to help people with uh, more focused and personalized uh, career guidance. So I felt uh, that's a quite interesting and a very helpful uh, organization that operates very well in in France. And, uh, and apart from that, there is one more, uh, uh, an, an active social media, uh, social media network or a platform called uh, Indians in Paris and France, and which has uh, significantly grown over the years with lots of people coming from India to France are there in the group, you know, where people share and uh, communicate and, uh, uh, and uh, provide information regarding the career plans and uh, share their experiences. So that's definitely helpful for a newcomer or uh, uh, new people looking from India, sitting in India and looking for opportunities will be, uh, will be absolutely helpful. That's what I feel. 
and and also there are other um, other organizations even indian embassy does to some extent in organizing the career uh, career guidance uh, uh, platforms that help students and uh, people who are looking for employment after their studies in france and uh, and also there are some indian origin uh, associations that i know of uh, like gopi of france and all uh, which also provide a platform you know to organize such workshops and calling people who are in the field and to share their experiences so that you know a larger uh, group of people can get the benefit yeah uh, so kriti do you have something to add to that whether did you have a similar experience while you were in france so kriti you are on mute Yeah, sorry. Uh, you're on mute. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes I can. I yeah. think, uh, I'll be honest that I used to get a lot of uh, invitations uh mm -hmm. for seminars and workshops, but I somehow missed the chance to attend them. But okay. I would explore the uh, through the portals and uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. as a researcher when we looked upon 10 years back, it is now very different. due to the mm. worldwide increase in the population demand to uncover various diseases and the cures and the vaccines now uh, which is valued more than over so yeah. research is actually playing an important role in discovering new treatments and uh, making sure that right. find the existing treatments for best possible right. ways so right. not only uh, the jobs are available in academia but mm -hmm. so many biotech uh, companies pharmaceuticals not only as a scientist uh, there are jobs uh, in corporate sector for scientific writing mm -hmm. and um, application scientist or even as a scientific communicator so personally i consider that um, every path is your own notepad to scribble on and uh, whether to make it conventional or non conventional every field has its uh, great scope and discovery so yes uh, in uh, france we used to get lot of uh, invitations but uh, i did not attend it so far <laughs> yeah. um i think you are on mute um yeah, yeah. so i know that uh, so from what both of you said that uh, if people really want to look for other opportunities there's always uh several platforms available uh, for interactions and getting to know about more uh, about your career choices than in india i think i think it's it's coming up in india but then it's much more i think europe is much more uh, exposed uh, to such opportunities so uh to um, so regarding so you did uh, pushpa you did a, a phd and a postdoc in france and then you came back to india and joined sinjin right that that's yes. your first job here okay yes. so did you think that uh, spending so much time in france uh, was uh, at was a brownie point for you to get to job or did you yes. really struggle uh, yeah. after coming from france How, what what was what was the situation yeah i mean yeah of course like you said that was a uh, that was a very good brownie point having such an experience in france uh, for 9 years um so while i was doing post doc uh, we started to you know you, we were uh, planning to move back to india after completing one phase of the post doctoral studies which is a good time to move back and then i was started uh, i started to look for opportunities in india since i was more focused to i mean we wanted to come back to bangalore so my uh, area of search was only limited to bangalore so i was looking for all possible uh, academic and uh, industrial research opportunities of course it was not easy i don't want to say that it was easy but uh, yeah uh, there are uh, there is a huge competition uh, in india uh, nowadays as everywhere uh, but yeah i mean the phd and experience uh, post doc experience france where i you know i i uh, i grew my, um, over the years that gave me um, a different level of confidence and i could deal with things i could communicate more confidently and uh, i i'm sure that helped me a lot in uh, in finding this job and uh, and in the place where i'm today okay good to know that so i think uh, that uh, gives some clarity on the part of you know some of the tips when you're looking for a job in india or yes. in in france i think so um sukriti what do you have to add to that is is doing such an extensive post doc i know that you had a, a very very extensive post doc was it crucial for your uh, for you getting the job so did it actually overpower you over i know other applicants what is your take on it yeah 
Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so for this question, I will certainly say yes. Yes. Uh, we, uh, I mean, uh, when we say that uh, uh, doing a postdoc after PhD, how important it is. So I think postdoc is actually extremely important phase uh, for the research, uh, especially in terms of biological sciences. It is very, very important. Uh, it is uh, very, very crucial uh, even to get job, not only in academia, even in industry. But if one has chosen a path of research, uh, this is when the real aspirations uh, they sought to attain can be fulfilled. So it teaches you to be a perfectionist, to troubleshoot, uh, solving your own problems, uh, developing a sense of independence as a researcher, as a scientist, liberty and and there are different uh, perspectives to look at the things. So extensive is, again, I will say just a word of perspective. It really depends on what one wants from their path chosen as a career to follow. If you can settle uh, for less, if you have, if you had enough or if you want more, if the inquisitiveness in, your, in you pushes you to uh, dig deeper, that is the question. Uh, we have always heard it, it's way easier when you work in your uh, hobby. And honestly speaking, throughout these years of studying, learning, researching, discovering, every single day has always felt like a query that I wanted to answer, not just needed to. As, as I felt that more is better, so I went for another postdoc uh, in my dream city in Paris, in France, and, uh, and to get a job, uh, especially as I said, for academic institutes. Postdocs are certainly important because uh, they do ask for a certain period of research experience and uh, with good uh, publications in a high impact journal. And to get jobs, uh, the position I am, it was highly competitive. And uh, during the interview, I could uh, see a long queue waiting for one uh, position. And everybody um, I encountered were uh, postdocs from abroad and good number of publications. So certainly uh, this area is uh, highly competitive, not only in academia, as I said, even uh, for Pushpa, uh, industrial yes, research, I agree. Uh, yeah. they need a perfectionism in certain techniques with good amount of uh, research and uh, which holds good for uh, any kind of jobs. So extensive or not extensive, it depends, but certainly perfectionism to certain scale or tool or to area uh, or a domain, it's absolutely important. Right, so I think uh, when you have um, such an experience actually interacting with scientists from all over the world, it also gives you a chance for collaboration. I think that's also partly a reason how you landed up in, in France. And yeah. so do you, do you still carry on these collaborations uh, during your length, the length of your career? Like, do you have something right now with France? Yeah, absolutely. So I will say uh, science is never done alone. One always needs collaboration. Research is the central piece of puzzle of uh, scientific discoveries, hence it has multiple aspects which is nearly impossible for one particular brain or source or resource provision to cover. So some researchers are good in one aspect while others are in something different. Resource sharing, collaboration is highly essential towards uh, scientific discoveries and, it's, and it significantly flares up the efficiency of various projects multiple population studies to be validated, one uh, whosoever is investigating. And also it provides a different way to have a check and control on your uh, ongoing, ongoing ideas. So well, uh, postdocs are the best time, I will say, for the best collaboration. Why? Since you are sharing a bench, a platform, uh, with so many budding uh, scientists who are full of enthusiasm and aspirations. And uh, naming Paris, which is uh, a, a cosmopolitan, you will find people from all over the globe. Uh, every small, big country, from every corner of the world, you will uh, find people around and you will get to share science, culture, thought process. It's from all over the globe. 
So I was very lucky uh, to have a collaborator who, uh, with whom I shared the bench and uh, Pushpa also knows him very well, Dr. Gautam Mehta from, actually from UK. So he was in uh, France and uh, with the whom presently uh, I have an Indo-UK uh, proposal which is funded by Smart, uh, Spark uh, scheme uh, from NHRD India. And uh, we got through and uh, with this grant and being in India, also at present, uh, I'm working so closely with uh, my collaborator in UK, who, with whom I met in Paris. And uh, we have a very frequent visit to each other's labs and uh, we have uh, frequent Skype calls. We exchange phones almost every week. And uh, actually, it's a huge help, I will say, as a scientist to grow in our field. So collaborations are certainly important. I do believe that is also important and that's the whole point of having, you know, Indo-French cooperations. It's not, uh, you know, bound to a particular country. It has to actually move overseas and then uh, move around globally for you to excel in any subject for that matter, just not in biology. I know that by chance we're all biologists here, but then this is it's a very general uh, tip for anybody to so, uh, Some of your collaborators with you in front. Um, sorry, Abhika, was that for me? It, your voice yes, broke. Pushpa. Actually. Yes, yes. Could you yes. please repeat it? Your voice was broken. Yeah, so about your collaborative uh, experience while um, you were doing your postdoc. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I would say uh, like uh, adding lines to what Sukriti said, which is absolutely true. And she made it a very valid point. Science mm. is never done alone. I completely mm. agree with that. And mm. of course, the great researchers come out of, uh, you know, collaborating with the right people in right time. Right. Right. So uh, both during my PhD and postdoc, I had the opportunities to collaborate with people um, across uh, France, Europe, and also from US, including mm. people from India. Mm. Uh, which is uh, always, you know, the connecting point, you know, we get more attached when we have those connections. Right. And um, uh, so because of these collect, um, all the collaborations and uh, the collective efforts, I strongly mm. believe that I could make, you know, some of the imp impactful research work. And I was part of uh, some of the research which were published in really uh, top uh, international scientific journals. And of course, this was all possible because of the... Um, contribution um, via our interaction and uh, the collaborations. I, I, I would uh, strongly encourage that for all the you know, young scientists, especially postdocs and young scientists, and uh, also to the, the scientific community in general. Right. OK, that, that's a really good news. And uh, so uh, I would now like to shift gear and go a bit towards the personal side, because that's something I think uh, every girl or every lady, every lady or every woman would want to know while you're making this huge decision because unlike have, doing a master's or a bachelor it's not a program where you commit just three years or you know, four years then you get a degree or a diploma because it's, it's a far more commitment than that though, though you might be uh, you know um, committing uh, four or five years to your PhD because you have to think ahead and um, also to, in deciding what uh, career you want to choose, what is the path ahead, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, we, uh, as women, we have a lot of uh, uh, things to juggle with. There's family, and there is there are other pressures. Like if you want to have a you know baby, uh, what do you do? So uh, I just wanted to ask you, Pushpa. I know that you have uh, two kids. Yes. Right. Yes. So uh, uh, one thing is how do you balance work and life? Another thing is when you had to take, I'm sure you would have taken a, a, a break in between. Was it a difficult choice to make? And how was it when you were coming back after the break? Was it the same or did you struggle a bit to come back? How did you, how did you manage? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I have two children. So uh, with, uh, you know, during that time, uh, I mean, those decisions are uh, uh, somehow uh, very important for life. Uh, so we can't compromise and uh, with the time as well as with the career. So of course, I, uh, I, took, the, I took those decisions. And uh, the first and foremost thing for, uh, I mean, to, uh, for this work-life balance for a woman and to with the children and family, 
I would say the strongest factor is the support from the family, uh, which will, uh, you know, which will give a, a, a huge source of energy for us, you know, to, and motivates us to work. So um, I was, um, I mean, both during my PhD and postdoc, I got a great support from my husband, Dr. Ravi Mati. So he is, uh, he's also from research background. So I got a great support for him. So uh, having kids and uh, while uh, uh, end of almost at the end of my PhD, I was uh, uh, pregnant with eight months when I defended my PhD uh, for, the, for my first son. So after that, I had to uh, take a break and I decided to uh, take that break purposely and I didn't want to continue my uh, research for at least for some good duration. I wanted to, uh, I, I deliberately wanted that break to spend some time with the family and to, uh, and to, and to make the, you know, that family relationships, I felt that was very important aspect of life. So uh, during that time, I, uh, since we were staying in France still, I, I used that opportunity to look for the postdoc opportunities. And I really got a very good opportunity um, from the lab of Dr. Sophie Lerterstein and where Sukriti also mentioned. So uh, uh, then I joined. Uh, so that was having a very small uh, kid and joining for a postdoc, which was really challenging. And like I said, without the support from the family, which will, uh, which will, it, it would not have been possible at all. And during the postdoc, when I had a second baby again, which was a, uh, so in the middle of the postdoc, uh, so in France, unlike in India, uh, they, there will be only uh, two and a half or three months of maternity break. And uh, just end of three months, we have to make sure that the baby is in the daycare and we are back to bench. So that was the challenging aspect. And somehow, I mean, both of us, my husband and I, uh, uh, Managed that, and uh, with all the facilities given in France for these uh, maternity uh, and uh, working women, the facilities given to the working women. So that was uh, very encouraging for me to rejoin uh, for my postdoc. And when I went back, I mean, everybody, it's, uh, it's as if nothing happened in the three months. I mean, I was just back as usual and I started my work. Uh, I, I, I almost, I mean, except that I have two babies at home when I get back uh, waiting for me. When I'm in the lab, I just forgot everything and, you know, as, as it was I before. That. I witnessed that at five o'clock, Pushpa will just run. My yes. baby will <laughs> up from the daycare and she will just run. Yeah, I set that timelines, you know, to pick up the kids from the daycare, which is, so we have to plan the work, you know, we have to plan the research accordingly. We can't, uh, we can't uh, depass, we can't, you know, uh, go beyond that timeline. Uh, and it will be late in the evening, we can't ask the caretakers to stay. So we have to manage uh, both the things. And again, after coming back to home, uh, uh, working with the family and then managing the kids. But it was a challenging aspect. But at the same time, it was really, you know, motivating. I mean, uh, as a woman, as a mother, I strongly encourage. I mean, I have no regrets for these breaks in my career. Rather, I, um, I'm, I'm strongly encouraged and motivated. Uh, I mean, you know, with the extending family and the support from them, I'm, I'm happy to see my happy kids. And while I go to work, I mean, so that's a strong uh, motivation from the family side that I get. Okay, that's good to know. And I think that will uh, give a sense of relief to so many people who are wondering about that, because I don't think we are so young when we uh, want to apply for a PhD. And when you consider the time it takes from PhD to postdoc, uh, so you have to actually take in account all these things. So that, that was actually really nice coming from you because you've been through this thing. So Sukriti, I have a slightly uh, different question. Maybe you can give a different take on this thing because that this, this was a personal break and uh, a lot of people think about it. But there is something which a lot of people don't think, which is a professional shift. So is it always necessary that you have to do your PhD and your postdoc in, in, the, uh, you know, in, in, particular, in specific places and then you have to come and get a job? Can you take a sabbatical? And I think you are the most apt person to answer that question because you have done something like that. So can you just elaborate on that? Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, that's right. Uh, I was uh, very, very fortunate that uh, I could get a chance uh, to have a sabbatical while uh, and have a break. So uh, after coming back from US, uh, as I said, I was uh, working as a senior fellow molecular biology in uh, 
the same institute and uh, uh, they had an MOU and I got an opportunity to do another postdoc in France. So uh, the best part is the institute, the one I'm working, which is from government, uh, government of Delhi, and even the, all the government institutes uh, nowadays or even industries are very, very open to give um, professional breaks with the commitment to come back and serve for the nation. So these professional breaks are like a wake or for the brain where you are working on self-development while enhancing your uh, skills for uh, when you get back to your professional career. So there has been a significant uprise of my skill set ever since and I have completed uh, my postdoc from France which has uh, provided me a great amount of work-life uh, satisfaction. So to cut it short uh, as we are running uh, out of time, so I would say that research is actually uh, an ocean and uh, uh, the government or non-government institutes these days have initiated, uh, affiliated or even self-motivated and funded professional breaks for one's development teaches us uh, a, a new skill to swim better, faster, and efficiently. Great to hear that. And uh, it's a very positive note on which we are going to conclude this session. I think we've tried covering most of the things, maybe for something which, which is very specific, we might require a separate session on its own. So actually, uh, I would like to tell you all that there are separate sessions coming on science and engineering PhD uh, with a <clears throat> focus on artificial intelligence and marine sciences. There are several things which are coming up with which we will be updating you as and when it gets finalized. Uh, but uh, as a, a concluding uh, part of concluding remarks, I would uh, I think it's very positive the whole discussion was and uh, uh, from both of your varying experiences, we could actually get an idea about uh, what is it to do a PhD and then a postdoc and then coming back to India for a job requires and I think people have a lot of uh, take home messages uh, tonight uh, from the discussion that we had and it's also nice to know that um, being a woman having a response uh, responsibility to manage home and family is not going to stop us from doing research because we have a nice uh, uh, <clears throat> a nice environment which is actually supporting and which is uh, actually for it so uh, i think everyone should uh, talk, uh, think about all these aspects and then go for the phd and uh, there are a lot of uh, questions which has come up online so I don't know whether I can answer everything, but in the next five minutes, I will try and answer the questions. And a lot of it has to do about the PhD entry. So as I said in the beginning of the, there's a lot of information there in the first seminar of PhD in France, which was done by Minakshi Singh, elaborated on the uh, PhD process. So as uh, Pushpa had also, um, <clears throat> highlighted an aspect of how a student can um, enter a PhD program. But on top of that, uh, there are ways in which I had shown you the different portals which you can make use uh, to enter into the PhD program. And uh, there are things which you have to bear in mind. So you don't necessarily have to use a portal. You can also read papers. And if you are intrigued or interested by some work in a particular lab, you can actually write to the person and uh, give your CV and uh, actually tell him why you want to uh, choose his lab for a PhD. Never submit a proposal. That is, this is quite generic for uh, all the fields because uh, except for management and arts, I'm uh, majorly here talking about uh, science and engineering that if you want to actually approach a person, just send your CV and a one page SOP. That would be sufficient for the person to get interested in you and the SOP shouldn't be generic. It has to be tailor-made for that lab. You can't just say, I am, uh, you know, I'm really good in science or something like that. So just uh, spend some time on your SOP and send in, uh, send in your, uh, uh, send a mail to the PI. And if he's interested, if he has a position, he will definitely let contact you back and then you can take it forward from there. And about the funding, I don't think you have to worry at all in France because there's a lot of funding for the PIs. And if a PI agrees to take you for a PhD, he should be having a funding. 
other than the scholarships uh, which are available and which you can get. You can get all those information from the previous webinar. And uh, if you have any question other than that about it, you can write to me uh, personally. And uh, somebody has asked the question whether it is uh, necessary to know French. I think we've uh, discussed that aspect in the first part. Uh, so if you didn't catch that point, you can, um, what I, I could say from the experience of people who have done their uh, postdocs and PhD in France is that uh, for the PhD itself, it's not necessary to um, know French, but it'll always make your life easier if you know a bit of French, if you want to get a baguette or uh, you want to have a cafe. It is uh, really important to know a little bit of survival French, which Allianz Frances, there are some uh, 13 Allianz Frances across the country who are ready to offer very good courses in and survival French courses so you can actually take that and then uh, uh, book your flight to France to do your PhD or your postdoc so that's not a problem and also your thesis no push by your thesis is also in English uh, and yes, it's only my the thesis is in English which is in French. Yeah. so we are expected so to you don't, don't have extract. to worry I think yeah so I think that's a big question whether uh, you know you have to write your thesis in French no you can write your thesis in English and you, you will be defending in English. So you don't have to uh, worry about that aspect at all. And um, uh, okay, so uh, there's another question whether we have to contact the professor directly or you have to apply to the university. You have to contact the professor directly where you have to apply. So it's either again through the portal that we have showed or you can, if you are interested in particular uh, scientific work, you can actually, the email address is on in, in the publication. So you can actually write directly to them. So the next question I think is about, um, uh, oh, difficulty in finding a mentor and whether we provide any help in this matter. So we do, we can help to some extent, but we can't tell what you want to do. Because again, I, as I said, uh, bachelors and masters are very different from the PhD. So you have to have some clarity in your mind about what's the kind of research you want to do, because this is going to take you to places. You, as you can see in the case of uh, Sukriti and Pushpa, they have, they're still continuing their PhD and postdoc in some sense. So you have, when you're stepping into something, you want to know whether you want a long-term commitment to that. So for that, I would advise you go through as much as publications uh, you, you can and then uh, uh, you know, shortlist some labs you're interested in and then contact them and see whether uh, they would like to take you. So I don't think uh, there's a problem in that. Also, this will give you some clarity. That is some homework for you to do uh, about uh, whether you want to do a PhD and whether you'd like to do a PhD. So I think uh, that that's a very good exercise for you. And uh, there's another question about publications. Are publications necessary to get a PhD admission in France? No, I don't think anybody would expect you to uh, have a publication at that level, but it's, it's good. It's good that if you have uh, publications in masters, but it's definitely not necessary uh, to have a publication. And, and uh, be affected in France post the COVID situation? I don't think so because all the scientists in France they're quite positive about it. And there are ways of dealing with it. Uh, so and uh, you know people are even getting extensions. I know France is very strict in plus one maximum but then the research gets delayed because of the current situations. There is always a way out so you don't have to worry about that. And um, uh, I think that is pretty much the questions we are having. Uh, okay, there is a query from a student who is asking whether this webinar was particularly for biology stream. I understand why that question has come because all of us are biologists here. Uh, but I would like to clarify, no, this is a very general, uh, it's a general discussion. It's, it's actually... Um, it will pertain to people who wants to do a PhD in any field because these are the pretty much the same things that would go on. But then uh, I, we could give you more clarity by organizing um, uh, webinars on particular subjects like science, engineering, management or arts. So if you would like, uh, if you like us to, um, you know, uh, come up with a webinar on any particular subject like that, you can always post there and we would see if it has demand. We would definitely go ahead and do that. So I think, uh, 
I've tried and answered more the question. Uh, finally, we have come to the close of the session, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Sukriti and Pushpa for office. And uh, Pushpa, I don't know where your kids are right now. So again, <laughs> support from the family. Yes, yes. You can that's sit a, yeah, that's and, visible. Uh, talk to us. Thank you so yes. so much. Yeah, uh, for your valuable you. time. Yes. Thank you for <laughs> answering all the questions. Yeah, I, I hope you guys had fun because that's the whole point yes. of having this yes. not to be monotonous and make it uh, a bit lively and not so yeah. boring for people. Yeah. So I hope everybody enjoyed this. Uh, so that's all I have to say. So think clearly and uh, take into account whatever you have learned today. And if you have any queries, uh, just uh, contact us. And I would also want to show you something. I know that these people are very hardworking scientists. Uh, but they also had a lot of fun. They actually visited places in France, as you can see here. And uh, that is uh, Pushpa in uh, front of the Eiffel Tower in Notre Dame. And uh, you can actually see that uh, both of them are there together, attending meetings in colossal buildings and um, having fun time with the lab. So PSG and postdoc is... Uh, having a lot of fun too, other than doing science. And that is how you collaborate and network. It's just not about doing experiments. So on that note, I think I will uh, just uh, end this session. It was, again, it, thanks a lot. It was lovely having you both here. And I hope people have benefited from this. If you have any doubt, you can just um, write to me under the comments. I will also give my uh, email ID there so that you can approach me if you have anything specific. Uh, so that's all for today. Okay, bye-bye and uh, have a good evening, all of you. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye, thank you so much.